हे जाविस टर्न ऑन पेंटिंग लाइट्स painting lights in the bedroom are now on imagine turning your home into a smart home where you control your lights devices and automations exactly how you want without relying on the cloud or paying monthly subscriptions that's what home assistant does it's an open source home automation platform that runs entirely on your own hardware private powerful and endlessly customizable in this video I'll show you how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, set it up from scratch, add smart devices, and even integrate a local voice assistant powered by AI using advanced language models like Llama or DeepSeek. And the best part, everything runs locally. Your data stays private and there's no need for constant internet access. If you already use Home Assistant and are just here for the AI voice assistant part, Feel free to skip ahead to that chapter using the timestamps below. Let's start by setting up the hardware. Here, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 and a micro SD card. I am also using an omnidirectional microphone that has a built-in speaker. This will be useful later when we set up the voice assistant. First, I'll place the Raspberry Pi into its case. It's always a good idea to keep your Pi protected. especially if it is going to run 24/7 next i'll plug in the mic and speaker combo into the usb port and keep the ethernet and power cable ready now we'll move to the software part flashing home assistant operating system onto the sd card to run home assistant we'll first need to install its operating system on the raspberry pi I'm going to use the official method recommended by Home Assistant, the Raspberry Pi Imager. Let's plug the micro SD card into the computer. Now, I'll open the Raspberry Pi Imager. Select the version that matches your Pi model. In my case, it is Raspberry Pi 4. In the OS selection menu, scroll down to Other Specific Purpose OS, then choose Home Assistant. For storage, I'll select the SD card I just plugged in. click next then right and let it flash the os onto the card this might take a few minutes once it's done safely remove the sd card from the computer now insert it into the raspberry pi connect the ethernet cable plug in the power supply and wait for it to boot up the first boot can take around 5 to 10 minutes Once it's ready, open a browser on any device connected on the same network and go to homeassistant.local and the port number is 8123. You might see a message asking you to wait while Home Assistant sets things up. Just give it some time and we'll be ready to log in. Once the setup is complete, you'll see the Home Assistant onboarding screen. Let's create a user account. I'll choose a name, user and password. This will be used to log in and manage everything. Next, we set the location and few other things. This helps Home Assistant give you the relevant data like sunrise, sunset and weather. Then we move on to the analytics screen. You can choose whether or not to share anonymous data. I'll leave that as is. Now we are in. This is the Home Assistant dashboard, also known as the Lovelace UI. At the top, you'll see the quick status cards. As devices get added, they'll show up here automatically. You can tap on them to control or view them. On the left we have the sidebar with access to settings devices automations and more. It's a clean and powerful interface that we'll explore more as we add devices. One of the best parts about Home Assistant is how easily it discovers devices on your network. Let's go to the config and then devices and services. You'll see that new devices have been discovered. In my case, it's found an air gradient air quality monitor. I'll click on it and follow the prompts to edit. Once added, I can view all its data like PM2.5, CO2 levels, temperature, etc. But not all devices are auto discovered. Let's say you want to add something like a Govee smart light or a TP-Link smart plug. 
To do that, click on Add Integration. From the list, search for the device or brand like Govi. Similarly, I will add TP-Link devices now. You may need to enter your account credentials or device IP depending on the brand. In the case of TP-Link, I will click on Discover Devices. Once added, you'll see your devices listed and ready to control. And just like that, both auto-discovered and manually added devices start showing up on your dashboard. Fully controllable. With our devices added, let's see how easy it is to control them. I'll head to the dashboard and turn on the painting lights. By tapping the switch and just like that, they are on. And I can now tap again to turn them off. Now let's create a simple automation. Something like turning on the outdoor lights automatically at sunset. I'll go to the settings, automation and scenes, automations and click on create automation. From the template options, I'll choose start with an empty automation. For the trigger, I'll select sun and choose the event sunset. For the action, I'll choose device, select my outdoor light and set the action to turn on. Click save and that's it. Now every day at sunset, the outdoor lights will turn on automatically. You can create more automations like this based on time, motion, weather, or even voice commands. And we'll get into that soon. Cool, now let's take things up a notch and add a local voice assistant powered by AI using large language models like Llama or DeepSeek running right on your own system. First, go to Settings, Devices and Services, Integrations, and click Add Integration. Search for Olama. This lets us connect to language models that are running locally. I already have Llama running on my server using Olama. If you want to learn how to do that, check out my video on setting up Olama with Llama or DeepSeek. Once the Olama integration is added, select the model you want Home Assistant to use. In my case, it's Llama. Now let's install the add-ons that bring voice control to life. First is Whisper. This handles speech to text, meaning it listens to your voice and converts it into text that Home Assistant can understand. Second is Open Wake Word. This listens continuously for a specific wake word, like Hey Home Assistant, and activates the assistant only when it hears that word, just like Alexa or Siri. Next is Piper. This does the opposite of Whisper. It handles text to speech, turning the assistant's reply into spoken audio that you can hear. And last is Assist Microphone. This ties everything together by connecting your microphone and speaker to Home Assistant so it knows where to listen and where to speak. Together, these tools allow you to have a real conversation with your smart home. You say the wake word, open wake word activates the system, Whisper understands what you said, Home Assistant processes the command, and Piper responds back with a natural voice. And it's all running locally, no cloud, no data leaving your home, and fully customizable. Open Wake Word and Assist Microphone usually show up as auto-discovered devices. Just click Configure to add them. Whisper and Piper sometimes don't show up due to a known issue in recent versions. To fix that, go to each add-on settings, scroll to the bottom and enable the port and enter a custom port number. Then go back to the integrations, click on add integration and add them manually using your home assistant IP and the port you assigned. Lastly, go to the Assist Microphone config and select your microphone and speaker devices, and that's it. After everything is set up, head back to Settings, go to Voice Assistant, and select Home Assistant. Then, choose the add-ons we just installed 
as shown on screen to complete the setup and ensure everything works smoothly. Now I'll show you a live demo of the AI voice assistant in action. I'll start by saying the wake word. Hey Jarvis, turn on painting lights. The painting lights in the bedroom are now on. Now let's test memory. I'll say, Hey Jarvis, turn it off. The painting lights in the bedroom are now off. And there you go. Home Assistant knows exactly what I am referring to because it remembers the context of our last command, which is not the case of Alexa or Siri or Google Assistant. You might have noticed there are some latencies in this process. Well, in the next video, I am gonna improve this process by offloading some of the processes running in Raspberry Pi to my local server. For that, you can subscribe to my channel to get notification. And finally, let's ask something random. Hey Jarvis, how to make scrambled eggs? I am just a voice assistant. I don't have the ability to cook or prepare food. However, I can provide you with a basic recipe for scrambled eggs. To make scrambled eggs, you will need asterisk two eggs per serving asterisk salt and pepper to taste asterisk one tablespoon of butter or oil instructions one. Crack the eggs into a bowl and whisk them together with a fork until they are well beaten. Two, add a pinch of salt and... Is there anything else I can help you with? All of this is running completely offline, powered by local models and your Raspberry Pi. No cloud, no internet and full control in your hands. If you want to know how to run your own AI models like Llama or DeepSeek locally or set up your own Nest for backups, Check out the links in the description. I have got full videos covering both. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more smart home projects. See you in the next one.